Oh no, I'm out of ammo. What am I going to do? Oh, it's 1.7. Enemy AI dropped their weapons and grenades, so I'm just going to take this. I love this version! Oh, really? You just stripped out the entire interior here? Man, that sucks. <laughs> he went down like a sack of shit. That's right, keep coming down the stairs like an all day. Welcome everyone from the always growing VR horde. My name's Rex, this is Eyes on VR, and in this video I'm going to be comparing what is known as the ultimate version of Onward. and compare it to the current version of Onward. I will also show you how to get the ultimate version of Onward for yourself through Steam because it's free. Everybody, this is Onward 1.7 versus 1.8. Game on! If you want to get to the comparison right away, you can skip to this timecode or you can go down into the description and check out all the timestamps for the different sections there. Please note though, this is PC versus PC as 1.7 is only available on PC through Steam. But I have done a PC versus Quest of the current version of Onwards, you can check that out right here. And if you're not going to skip ahead, I am going to open with the story of how Downpour Interactive increased their player base massively with new players while simultaneously pissing off 90% of its loyal fans that had been with them up until version 1.8. Ever since Onward made its way onto the Oculus Quest there has been extreme uproar and controversy from players. The version that included the Quest version was 1.8 and this version compared to the PC had missing mechanics, worse sounds and visuals, building interior changes, cut maps, lighting changes and more. All this comes down to one thing though, crossplay. You could now play Onward on PC VR and play against or with people on the Oculus Quest running Onward natively. But that's the problem. The Quest 1 couldn't handle even a quarter of what the PCs could and you can't have PC players hiding behind props and objects in the world that the Quest can't have because it's just too strenuous on the hardware. So it was all stripped out. And you can see how hard they hit PC VR players in future patch notes that came out that said, quote, Fixed PC version of Bazaar having no windows versus the Quest version, unquote. Shot through a wall on PC? That's because it's not a wall on Quest, it's a wall with windows. And to make a PC game run on Quest is actually a very simple process, but it means losing visual quality, audio quality, items, maps, gameplay modes, and more. I referenced my Onward Quest versus Onward PC comparison before, but I've done the same with Pavlov and Pavlov Shack. You can check that out here, and it's just a striking indifference between the PC and Quest. As you can imagine, if you brought Onward and have been playing it since version 1.7 or even version 1.0 and followed the game and its progression up until that point, and then suddenly the quest comes out and you're downgraded massively from what you spent your money on and what you've been experiencing, you're gonna be pissed. And people were, and they still are. There's still a dedicated community that play Onward 1.7 as well. I'll link their Discord in the description, but crossplay is the main crux of the matter here. And quite clearly right now, you need two separate versions of your game, one for PC and one for Quest. Don't get me wrong, Contractors allows crossplay and they've done it quite right. The differences are there, but no one's really complaining about the quality. But I think with the quests being in such early iterations right now, doing things like Pavlov or even Zero Caliber, where they have a completely separately built version for the quests and the original PC version is the best way to do things. Of course, that's just my opinion. Onward story about 1.7 and 1.8 is long. And this is a comparison video, not a social commentary. So in this comparison, we're gonna look at the main menu and believe me, you're gonna wanna see it. I know it sounds crazy. Then I'll take a look at the graphics overall, which I'll use parts from upcoming sections to demonstrate, but I'll also include a look at the weapon models in the graphics section as well. We will then go on to maps and I will show you the cut content from 1.7 that isn't in 1.8 in regards to playable levels. We'll take a look then at sound and a bonus bit somewhere in the video going into overcut 1.7 gameplay mechanics and content. So let's begin. The main menu. If you've ever played Onward, you know this menu, the desert base that you've seen a thousand times before. If you haven't, just keep your eyes on the ground and the color tones for this one, because this is the only menu screen you get. 
Now 1.7 instantly for me, it's the floor textures that stand out and that view, it's not blocked off by boxes, you can see through the fence, the smoke, the trucks and even your different standing position. But 1.7 has other menu screens too. There's this abandoned base in the forest, which is clearly a Volk base, which is very nice to see as we only see Marsoc bases, obviously, in the desert, standard one menu screen we get in 1.8. Then there's also what looks like this Snow Peak-esque menu as well, which I think is really cool. It looks massive. Now let's take a look at the graphics. And where better to start than with a simple smoke grenade? There's a clear difference here and clearly 1.7 looks a lot more like smoke rather than just a sprite like in 1.8. If I go around the back of 1.7 smoke, you can clearly see it's blocking the whole street, which is really effective, as a smoke should be. Now let's try a frag. For me personally, these are both pretty lackluster. This is the inside of the gas station on quarantine. As you can see, prop and lighting changes here, definitely. This house in suburbia shows a lot of how the changes were made from 1.7 to 1.8. The house itself is a bit more low res, but not too much. But you look at the grass level, the picket fence, the tree, the general foliage, all different for less prop models or just nothing at all. Here's a pan round quarantine to give you a better idea of lighting and draw distance changes. Buildings cut out, assets moved. In 1.7, it really looks like a plane has crashed here. You've got the smoke, you've got the fire, you've got the airplane bits all over the place. Now here's a look at some of the gun models, and to Downpour Interactive's credit, these aren't different. The 1.7 models and the 1.8 models are exactly the same. The only difference here is the way that they react with the clearly different lighting system they've got. The biggest difference here really is the AK-5C seems to be a bit greener and less shiny in 1.7, but that could just be a lack of reflection maps or something like that on the model that they then inputted in 1.8. Also you can see the 5.7 is a completely different colour, but the model is definitely exactly the same. So let's take a look at maps themselves, and let's start with the big boy, Downfall. I have to admit here, I like the lighting on 1.8, but you can't argue with those textures on 1.7's version. Bonus gameplay features of Onward 1.7. Supply crates change their textures depending on the area that you're in. For example, when you're in the jungle, they look like this. There are working props as well. For example, on Turbine, you can use the lifts.
the AI don't have pre-made animations, they have full ragdoll capabilities. You can loot enemy AI for their weapons, ammo and grenades. Oh 1.7, I think I love you. Now downfall, it's the difference in props here that gets me. Removed walls, fire, smoke and debris. It really breathes new life into this very bare looking street. This plain road bursts into life in 1.7. But Suburbia to me is the one that's hardest hit. Trees missing, models gone, lower textures. Wait till you see the interiors. But first, let's take a walk down Main Street. Now this is the starting area everyone has been at. If you've played Suburbia, you've been here. But look at how much more open this space is in 1.7. No fences, no cutoffs, no blocked views, just nice and open feeling of a residential area. Now the interiors. Gone is the entire garages inside here. Gone are the little props that show that this was someone's house, like a knife rack or a toaster or a microwave. It's just the bare minimum of what they could put in. Even the TV is on and flickering and that just gives a little more atmosphere, but it's all gone in 1.8. But that's not all. What about the maps you don't get? The maps that were cut from 1.7 when they moved over to 1.8. Well, 1.7 also had a map called Jungle. This is a beautiful map. Just look at it. This is some real Vietnam type stuff. If you think Predator the movie, that's what you're basically looking at here. And can you imagine having firefights in this jungle? It looks amazing. I would love love to do some uplink or assault on this map it's gorgeous and the atmosphere is great so many levels all these bridges all these cliff faces absolutely fantastic Abandoned is probably my favorite of the cut maps. There's still one more to go after this. Abandoned is basically a massive forest with a little compound and then a tiny little base to the side of that. But what's amazing about this map is in the compound, the enemy can come from anywhere. 360 degrees from the thick foliage and the thick brush. You've no idea where they're gonna come from. Can they pick you off from the trees? Probably can. Could you imagine having an uplink station in the middle of this compound and having to defend it? People can come from anywhere. I think the tension and the fun and the stealth that you could get away with in this map is amazing. That brings us on to the amazing Turbine. Now I said Abandoned was my favorite and it is, but whoa, Turbine's coming in a close second. It's really simple. You've basically got two offices or bases at the end of each of the maps and a big damn bridge in the middle. And that's it. You're either going to be sniping each other from those bases or you are going to be running through the dam to try and get to the other side or you're going to be meeting outside on the bridge in the middle. And I was doing some PvE on this map and it was great. I got into a massive firefight on the bridge and it was absolutely exhilarating. Now that brings us on to sounds and luckily for anyone watching, this is the part where I shut up for a while. But I do have a couple things to point out.
What I noticed here with the AK-12s is the magazine. If you look here and here, you can see that there should be sort of windows here where you can look into the magazine. On 1.8, obviously these are just completely blanked out, don't react with the light or anything. But on 1.7, these windows are clear and you could use this to count rounds in your mag other than just having to look down it to check and see how many you've got left. This is a really nice touch and it's such a shame that they got rid of it. Now freeze frame right there. See how on 1.7 I'm ejecting a red cartridge? In 1.8, if I load in a red cartridge or three, you can see the bolt is still open, so I was empty. Now what color do you think comes out? Green. Now this video has been me loving on 1.7 and after weeks of playing it, I am exactly that. I am in love with 1.7, but 1.8 does show improvements for player comfortability and quality of life. For example, on downfall at night here on 1.7, it is pitch black. And that flare, whilst it has its dynamic lighting and looks absolutely beautiful, is really useful. I know many people, including myself, who often or not often forget to put their night vision on when we switch to a night map. So you end up using the first round, having half of any team, just not having night vision and knowing what's going on. And in 1.7, you can't see anything. Clearly, this is something that's been brought up a lot. And in 1.8, there's more interior lighting. There's lighting coming from vehicles like the Humvees and the trucks. So you can see around and to be honest, it's so light that the flares don't really do a whole lot but that is an example of how whilst this game is lacking from what it was it is still improving on things it didn't have originally anyway downpour haven't left us out to dry they've just made a mistake so you want to play version 1.7 do you well, to Downpour Interactive's credit, they've made it really easy. All you have to do is go to Onward in your Steam library, right click on it, click Properties, go down to Beta, you'll see a little drop down menu that says None, click on that, select 1.7 Backup, come out of that and then Steam will start downloading and installing version 1.7 and that's it. Once it's downloaded, click Play and you're off. But warning, if you are looking for PvP action here, you will need to go to the Discord and arrange that with members of the community. A link will be in the description for that, or if you get really lucky and you log on and you look for a multiplayer game, someone might be playing, but that will probably be rare timing. You can PvE till your heart's content though, and you can get a friend or two to come in and join some super awesome co-op PvE action as well. But believe me, the bots are a lot different than they are in 1.8. They will use smokes as well, and they are ruthless. If you stuck around and you got this far, thanks very much. I love you. You're amazing. Come back to the channel anytime. And I appreciate it a lot. Tell me what you think about Onward 1.7 in the comments. Have you played it? Will you play it? Also, don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the video. Subscribe down below for more PC VR, Oculus Quest content, in-depth reviews, comparisons, and all things VR. My name is Rex. This is Eyes on VR. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Game on!